Uh, good evening, guys. Ken at Tortoise Capital, nightly strategy podcast for October 10th, 2022. Uh, so we had some good work today with uh, VTI. Uh, I talked to them a little bit about the ideas behind creativity and uh, a little sketch that came out of our session yesterday. Um, the idea being that uh, on your normal pathway, you might occasionally see a potential off-ramp. You might actually have some courses of action to do some explorations. But on our, on our long journey, we actually want to have uh, more choices in our networks about how to proceed. And we need to be able to see the connections between things in a more reliable and robust and consistent way. And that with the Fletcher creativity, that what we're doing is we're not learning how to be creative as much as we are doing exercises that allow us to release the natural forces of our innate creativity that are baked into our evolutionary brain. That our brains have been adapted to make use of our innate creativity to come up with ideas that might work that could be innovated and then maybe with some skill turned into an engine that could produce power that could then drive a drive shaft and apply power to the wheels that could do work in wherever we have an intention to do work that the uh, the ability to leverage this initial burst of energy that comes out of our creative resources is what we really want to do so what we can think of is that there is a locked door that's blocking our easy access to the innate creativity we have, which is the effect of modern education and cultural individual suppression. And that all we really got to do is open the door. Well, what if we got to unlock the door? Then unlock the door. We got to have ways of unlocking that door. And then our job is to go to that door, to knock on it. And when it opens, you go or knock it down and go. And then the question is, can you knock on the door? Can you go to the door? If it opens, can you go through it? Well, you can, but will you? And if you do go through it, why? What are What's so important about your intentions of things that you want to do in the world that are so powerful that it reaches back like a magnet and pulls all this energy forward and then it's just a simple matter of technique of learning how to leverage your skills and those of your team uh, in order to um, turn all of that enthusiasm and potential energy of the fire into actual work being performed. That was sort of the nature of our discussion yesterday and then with the one that we just finished up today, Lesson 16 of 30 in the Creativity course, which is... Uh, earth shaking. You know, it relies a lot on the work of uh, Professor Angus Fletcher. You can find him all over YouTube if you want to uh, check him out. He's a, a pleasure to work with, a real uh, gentle soul and driven with an inner fire to bring the good news of creativity to the world. Here's some ones he's done with Andrew Barry on the teaching aspect of creativity that yes it actually can be taught we can teach you to find the doors and open them and go through them and improve the probability that your creative mind will find expression on the problem that you seek answers for so i encourage you to uh, listen to his work on the web um i took some time in the vti podcast today to uh lavish some well-earned praise on the students who have been doing so much of the heavy lifting for us for the past couple years during COVID. Um, if you claim to be a teacher, then I would just say, show me your students. Well, here are the students whose work has just been phenomenal. Uh, Danny, who 
did all the coding on the TC2000 bundle and the options course that translates our swing trades and turbo trades into low risk options trades in his options course. Phenomenal piece of work. Uh, very highly regarded by everybody that's taken it. Luke and his five minute Aussie. Simple intra robust system for all seasons in Forex. Ken H, you guys know from the great work he does on the weekends, setting us up for success with swing trading. Uh, Griff and Phil, who are building out personalized adaptations of specific systems to show people how to do that and maybe translate it into Thinkorswim. Uh, and Griff showing uh, how he developed the Kata 2 system that emerged from the Kata 2 challenge, which was simply to trade one symbol every day in all seasons using three patterns and trading by the numbers with discipline. And he's really refined that into a pretty nice system. Bill Scheidt and Jeff Picasso, who've been working with me for almost 20 years now, are putting together a crypto swing course for VTI, and uh, it, they're going to show how they apply standard work to abnormal conditions. It's a phenomenal course by two really great traders. Glenn Osborne's been developing um, his particular style of coaching, which is very well received by the folks working with him. I would encourage you to consider uh, scheduling some time with him if you need some inner clarification or some illumination. Uh, he's also been working on swing trading one day at a time. Uh, Tom Hardison has been uh, helping us build uh, leadership and student teams of accountability and uh, team building with a human focus. It's just some great work. Uh, Constantine You've seen his charts in here. They are many master classes on how to apply a couple robust patterns to some symbols that you uh, focus on as an expert, and he's been turning that into uh, some proprietary trading opportunities that are outstanding. And then my brother with the sniper trading, uh, helping us standardize how we find the best targets, give those targets to our snipers, who take low-risk shots once those targets start moving in predictable ways, and they're uh, bringing home the bacon every day on that one. So you can hear all their stories at tortoisecapital.net, um, their testimonies from last year at the research weekend in December. And uh, I'm looking forward to their updated presentations uh, for this year because they've, they've only gotten better uh, in each and every one of them. So it's going to be a nice set of um, presentations and research uh, in a very low-cost, affordable uh, workshop. So uh, keep up the great work, fellas. The essence of what we've been doing in the creativity course, uh, I briefed this one today, and you can hear the video in greater detail on the uh, Patreon site, was that we're essentially using Fletcher's treatment for creativity to emphasize life living behaviors and attitudes and staying away from the limiting, constrained, overly rational, uh, zero defect mentality of perfect test taking. We're going to, we're going to vote for the slightly messier and more robust life living. We're going to unleash the natural forces with Fletcher's creativity. And we're going to use the truth-telling and deep listening uh, of David Bogey's true storytelling to unleash our inner stories and inspire and inform each other and uh, offer our gifts to the world. And we're adding the ideas of standard work and doing routine things routinely um, from the Foundations course of the Tortoise and when you bring all three of those things together, you're going to discover that you're achieving the maximum sustainable rate of learning, which is an edge in a world that is changing faster than people can make rules for. So it is a real edge to be able to learn at your maximum sustainable rate. And that's what the Creativity 202 course paired with the Foundations course is doing. So I would encourage you to consider that as a personal development opportunity 
par excellence. Shifting to uh, the daily trade today, let's look at the 30-minute charts. This is 30-minute um, frequency, and this is our 5-day look back to here. This is the 10-day look back, so that's your 10-day high. Uh, this was your 10-day low, and we're back there testing that early today. This is the one-day marker line, so we uh, closed here yesterday and opened here today and then did nothing but sell off hard to a new 10-day low. We test the 10-day low and then recovered a little bit, uh, but now we're pushing the PSAR flip and uh, we have a minimum manageable risk box here. So we're in that bottom portion of the 10-day. Uh, there's a uh, a move back to 370 would not be surprising halfway up the stack and then another move to 380 uh, to get just to the 10-day high. It's instructive to note that the 5-day volatility is the same as the 10-day volatility. That's how vigorous this move has been and how volatile. And that's why we're seeing so many Godzilla patterns, which is our favorite sniper pattern. Uh, when we look at the daily charts and look back 30 days, uh, we will see uh, here's your one day move and your one day range. Here's your five day range, which is as large as your 10 day range. Here's the, uh, so that's the 10 day look back, 20 day look back, 30 day look back. Here's our 30-day high and our 30-day low. Uh, we've had one leg up on this little move, and as we said, when it started to roll over and it crossed the baby dragon, look out below, and it's done nothing but come straight back to test the PSAR. So we are in a compound critical state as of tomorrow. Uh, this purple line here is the outline of the 150-day look back. So this is also the 150-day look back the 30-day look back, the 10-day look back, large volatility on five days. So this is perfect Godzilla weather. Weather. So if it comes out of this, there's a large move in either direction, certainly possible, and we'll be simply ready for that in a bare normal conditions. And here on the 150-day look back, you can see uh, exactly what we mean uh, of how the mighty have fallen, how they have come all the way back uh, to this low, uh, it got through that high but couldn't hold. Leg one, pause. Leg two, pause. Is this the start of leg three? If so, that could go to 340. And you got to be mindful of that. If, the, if this support level breaks, there's nothing holding this thing up. Now, could it get back to the 10-day high? Sure, it could. The 20-day high? Sure, it could. The 30-day high? Sure, it could. But that's the trail of tears. Uh, walking up the steps. This is what it looks like jumping out the window. The downside is easier to trade and more painful to more people. So that's why it's a real possibility. If we look at the sectors, let's take a look at sector performance today. Uh, we had the S&P down another 0.72. The Russell was better at 0.56 of a loss. Diamonds were best at 0.34 of a loss. Uh, tech was just about as bad as the market, minus 1.1. Emerging markets were terrible, 1.4. And treasuries continued to get pounded. They are now under key price level of 100. Uh, let's take a look at the weak areas first. In case we get some more of that tomorrow. There's so many of them. All right, so um, this was our cut line between actual gains and actual losses. Here's the S&P at minus 0 0.7. Um, so we had the Aussie dollar off 0.8. A cluster of blended commodities, real estate, fangs, and wheat and precious metals. 
between 1.1 and 1.3. Bitcoin, one and a half. Tech, oil, oil exploration and biotech, 1.68 to 1.8. Energy, lithium and clean energy down to two and a half. Uh, both of the arcs, genomics and innovation at minus 3% and 3.3. Ethereum and uranium off 4, 4% and 5%. Marijuana off 6.86, so all the joy from last week is, I don't want to say this, but going up in a puff of smoke, you, yeah, okay, sorry about that. Um, losing individual stocks, Rivian minus 7% on a recall of all Rivians, and the question was asked properly on CNBC, how do you service all those vehicles and manage vehicle recalls without any dealerships? We're about to find out. PayPal off 6.3, 6 NVIDIA 3.4, Robinhood, Devon Energy, Microsoft up 2.1, 2.3, and 2.6. Here's another uh, chip stock, Intel, and here's Texas Instruments at minus 1.6, 2% in Intel. So that's your, that's your semiconductor index, all of them getting smashed, uh, all of them worse than tech. Uh, sector so a lot of weakness in domestic chip makers. Squarespace uh, 1.4, Alcoa underperforming at 0.46, and then Tesla basically flat for the day at 2.23. So a wide variety of weaknesses to uh, to look at here today. All right, let's take a look at the above the line, the ones that made. Made, uh, or were not as bad as the S&P. Some of them even made money. Um, XLY, the consumer discretionary uh, finance, minus 0.36. Minus 0.6 on discretionary. Uh, then a trio of Brazil, Simon Property Group, which is commercial real estate in Mexico, basically flat. And then into actual green uh, for materials, 0.2. Uh, Staples 0.36, uh, both lumbers 1.6 and 1% respectively, agriculture and VIX at 2.4. Individual companies that did better, uh, two of the top, or actually two of the top two, our top two symbols today, uh, Cliff at 5.2 and U.S. Steel 2.7, and Alcoa was above the S&P even though it lost a little bit, it was relatively stronger. So there's our metals. Uh, all looking pretty good with basic materials and not much else. Um, our eyes are on Brazil, as we said last week and during the weekend reports. Quick look at the sniper trade of the day. Uh, so this is... Devon Energy. Three-minute chart. So here's the uh, gap up opening. And the OR3 by the breakout standard risk. Uh, fractional gain. It then falls through the bottom of the PSAR. So I stop and reverse on the PSAR flip. It turns out to be the same risk box as the previous one. So that's about a 0.5. Uh, routine capture of about another half of an R. So we're up about one for the day so far. Uh, it could not break through the PSR. It tried. Uh, but it got rejected immediately, you know, at the dragon, and then broke below. And so I, I treat this as a kata two, because you have a high at one, a low at two, a lower high at three. So I'm ready to get short on the RLXD, and call that a kata two to the downside. And now if it gets past this 
swing low, then it's a collapsing dragon. And then I would prefer to have this entry rather than that entry uh, because you get paid that extra little piece before it has started to just run away fail. And it run away fails. Um, I thought I was a little slow on the exit here. Uh, the bottomed out here, that was a one, two, three. I, I think I should have been out here at the edge of the dragon or here, but I took this one. And uh, that represents about 2R. There's a unit of risk. So 1, 2, plus the that is all worth about, I should say, this is all worth about 1R, plus that 2. So we're about plus 3 right now. Take the stop and reverse, quick scratch. Caught a 2, re-entry. Why is it a caught a 2? Well, because it has a swing low and a higher low and uh, the piece are held so we get it here with standard risk uh, scratch and I think that was enough for me today um, it was too choppy and um, and I was in the uh, third podcast, which cost me some money today. Uh, but a couple tradable moves in Devon, I just was not in the zero state ready to trade. So about plus three for the day on Devon. All right, we'll shift to uh, let's see, daily reports. We'll start with dashboard one. We just went into bear volatile today. Look out below. Oversold in every condition. Horrible risk Z. This is getting ready to collapse. That is significant. Bearish volatile. What's working on the min panes? Merck, Caterpillar, Travelers, Boeing. What's not working? Tesla, Nike, Procter. Intel and Microsoft getting smashed. In the Dow Tactical Summary, uh, just noticing all of the symbols that had big breakdowns today on a 10-day low, 1-month low, 3-month low, 6-month lows, all of them horrible weakness. Uh, Cisco... Uh, IBM and Intel, which had an especially bad day. Microsoft collapsing. Pfizer and Procter collapsing. Tesla collapsing. Verizon collapsing. Lots of 5DDs. Lots of auto framers. But it takes a special kind of courage to be swing trading the long side in this market. I look at these as uh, all of those 5DDs. I'm looking to see them fail and become 5DD failures um, in a bearish, volatile market. That's what I'm doing. ETF tactical summary. Uh, tremendous number of auto framers. You got uh, real U.S. real estate getting smashed. Clean energy and tech obliterated. Treasuries getting smoked. Consumer discretionary getting smoked. No safe spaces. The auto framer gives you the uh, mechanical uh, swing trade frames for swing trading one day at a time. The daily squeezers are highlighting some things that had small ranges today that might have a nice 
potential big breakout if you're using the size of the daily range. I'm attracted to U.S. Steel and 3M and Walmart. Uh, this is sniper territory here. I mean, the snipers are really out in full force. You got a ton of Godzillas to choose from uh, in the S&P 500. And I favor the ones that are already green and green because they are moving now. There is a 7.8 Sigma move in uh, BIO and in LRCK or LRCX 3.5 Applied Materials In a tactical symbol set quite a few Godzillas uh, Real Estate Microsoft, Intel, NVIDIA The Tech Sector Arc Innovation, Ethereum, and Treasury. So quite a wide range of uh, different elements of the business cycle uh, in a Godzilla mode. Uh, the one-day movers, you can see there are some extraordinary one-day moves on this collapse today. Anything more than two is really quite extraordinary. None of the quiets have made a big move on their one day, but there's quite a few, most volatiles, that are volatile on both five and one day, and I'd be looking at those for sure. The multi-time frame NDX summary, you can just see the pain and suffering everywhere. Uh, Cliff and Brazil, one of the few, or a couple of the few um, favorable areas. Uh, we're going to shift to the uh, day, or to the traders now, see how the boys did. Here's Constantine uh, doing a nice job as usual in gold and U.S. dollar spot. Three-minute charts. Sees the collapsing dragon breakdown, PSAR flip breakdown. Gets paid, exits at the usual spot when the PSAR flips. Um, yeah, and this one is the collapsing dragon and exiting here uh, when this rolls over and then can't hold and it goes through the PSR he waits for his wrist box to form and gets short with an exit in here for 2.3 it is useful to note uh, that he identified the big spike candle down as an exhaustion sell-off and as it started to recover he was able to cash that. That's what comes from knowing your symbol or in this case your symbol pair very very well. Uh, let's see. Here's uh, another gold spot and uh, versus the dollar. Uh, he plays the um, tries to break out to the long side here on the upside but it rolls over so he escapes quickly for minus 0.15 gets a stop and reverse here cash is 1.78 so for net about 1.5 trading what he knows uh Woj could not get out of his own way today. Uh, although the, the 
The Devon trades were excellent. This little shelf collapsed, so he gets the collapsing dragon and smashes it. Uh, the Tesla trade, not so much. I like the short. We sure gave back a lot and only kept 0.4. If that's 0.4, then this was probably 1.6 at some point. We gave a lot of that back. And then the break it, the breakout here, instead of at the PSAR flip, makes all the difference between a winning and a losing trade here. Um, this one is late. We should be here, and then that should scratch. This should be a stop and reverse. That should be your second position, so we should have made bank on that. And then... That's your piece of our flip all day. And there's an SSC and a Kata 2 all day. And a collapsing dragon. So um, maybe over trading, chasing it too much, not being adaptive to both directions in the market is how I'm reading that one. Uh, this one is um, tough to swallow. There's a scratch. Here's the show. Nine times out of ten, you take that short with a second position here. But we didn't get it this morning. Probably span of control. Um, there's a Kata 2. There's an SSC that scratches. There's a Kata 2 that might pay off a little, but not much. This one, um, he exits here in order to get into the zero state, I think. Uh, but there was a stop and reverse available that would pay. Uh, it did better in the afternoon. Um, this effort to go long stopped and reversed here. This has got, you got to scratch that there instead of taking a full loss there. And then that allows you to get a better entry. And um, that's not bad. I'd like to see a re entry here. But the, on this one, when it bursts up and it can't get above the previous high and all it did there was harsh sell-off, and it starts to harsh sell-off, you can't let it get back all of that. you gotta, you got to harvest that a little more. So shake it off, get a good night's sleep, and let's crush this thing tomorrow. Uh, Griff with EWZ, the Kata 2 Challenge. Let's see what he's got on this one. Uh, there's a PSR flip. He plays the CD PSR flip here. Gets paid. Plays the CD. Gets paid a CD for a scratch. For 2.2 .2 on Brazil today. I missed this one on Woj. Here's a couple R in... Uh, in the Aussie, um, good, good scratch, but we got to get that shot right there, man. That's that's why you're there. Is if that doesn't work, you crush this thing. Um, a couple good efforts. This is starting to overtrade now. PSR flip gets him back in line with the primary move of the day. That's a great re-entry. Um, Good capture, good stop and reverse here. So gets a couple of it back today. Pretty good work. All right, that's everything we got for today. We'll get this published and posted. You, I think you want to listen to that hour-long video uh, podcast that I did for VTI. It's on the homepage there on Patreon for subscribers. I think that's pretty well done. I posted the slide deck in here for you to refer to as well. All right, that's everything I got. Uh, we'll take care of business and see you guys tomorrow.